2020 was a great year for Sierra Olympic. Uh, we added about 11 employees, so we're up above the 30 employee count. Our business grew at a robust place, at, at a robust pace. Uh, we, most importantly, probably the highlight is we moved into new facilities. Uh, we're in a new facility here in our home in Hood River, Oregon. Uh, we moved from about 9,000 square feet to about 22,000 square feet. So we have new clean room space, new manufacturing space, plenty of room for engineers, plenty of room for marketing, plenty of room for growth. An example for, is, is what you see behind us. This is our trade show booth that we used to take to trade shows. Of course, when trade shows shut down in 2020, we brought our trade show booth right up here and are conducting seminars and training and other videos right up here right now. Thankfully, we have the space to do that. Uh, another important uh, improvement or uh, advancement at Sierra Olympic is that this year we're going to be marching into uh, ISO certification. We're millimeters away from that certification. We've been working for six to eight months to get that up and running. So the company is both expanding and adopting serious quality models so that our products can be better and our manufacturing processes can be better and our quality can just continue to improve and improve and improve. We're always introducing new products. You've probably heard a number of uh, new products coming out, namely uh, mid-wave cameras for optical gas imaging and uh, especially our full HD uh, Bayou product, which is a full HD long wave product. Uh, those have been discussed extensively. Those have been our marketing focus over the past uh, several months, but we're gonna talk about new products that are just coming online in this first quarter of uh, 2021. So the first product I'd like to talk about is what we're calling Ventus Hot. So Ventus is our product line of cooled mid-wave cameras and they range from tiny cameras for airborne to specialty cameras for optical gas imaging to uh, long range cameras. Uh, Ventus covers the, the range of cameras that involve a cooled mid-wave sensor. Uh, the Ventus Hot is kind of an improvement over the regular, our, our first version of Ventus. We have three models of Ventus Hot. The three models represent a 300 millimeter continuous zoom, actually 15 to 300 millimeters. The camera over here is a 35 to 690 millimeter continuous zoom. And what's not on the table, but is an even bigger product is the uh, Ventus 900, which is 45 millimeters to 900 millimeters. Ventus Hot is designed as a camera as a component for long range surveillance customers and particularly for integrators. We have a number of customers that have mechanical engineering capabilities and are primarily in the system integration business and we sell them what is a camera engine that they integrate into their products to uh, uh, provide that persistent surveillance uh, long range thermal imaging, uh, uh, security surveillance uh, kind of uh, uh, market need. Um, what's changed uh, from our original Ventus, which was uh, introduced maybe three years ago to this new Ventus Hot. Well, the most important is that uh, we've adopted the high operating temperature mid-wave sensor. Uh, high operating temperature means that the sensor operates at the traditionally higher temperature than normal mid-wave sensors. And with the oversized cooler that's provided with the hot mid-wave sensor, the uh, cooler works at a lower power level and thus 
has a much longer life. So out of the box, all of our customers get a 25 month uh, warranty. Uh, and the anecdotes for this sensor technology is that it easily makes the uh, 25 hour uh, or the 25 month uh, lifetime. Generally 20,000 hours is the rated life. It's the right combination of size, cost, and adaptability to a variety of optics that allowed us to create this family of products. So when we say a component um, or camera is a component, what do we mean? Uh, it means that we tie together all the functions of the lens, the power supply for the cooler, the sensor electronics, the video processing that turns a sensor and a lens into a usable camera. The infrared market is diversified. And there's lens vendors, there's sensor vendors, and basically they leave it to customers to understand all the nuances of integrating lenses with sensors and uh, it's not as straightforward as you would think. Over the years, we've provided over 4,000 mid-wave cameras. We're probably one of the largest suppliers of mid-wave cameras on the planet, meaning integrated cameras. We work across the industry with a number of different mid-wave vendors. And over those years, we've learned about the nuances of putting mid-wave zoom lenses together with mid-wave sensors. Uh, we have complex jigs that offer us the ability to precisely align the zoom axis with the center pixel. We can uh, lock everything down so that the sensor is perfectly aligned with the, with the data so that uh, vertical is true vertical, which sometimes is a problem when you have a lens that rotates. Uh, all of our jigs um, provide for that careful um, alignment and then the calibration of the focus with the sensor. You can never get the sense the lens at the exact position and you always have to recalibrate the lens to match its position on, on the sensor. And so our laboratories are equipped with the jigs, the collimators, and the tools that allow us to do that. Uh, we develop our own targets in our collimators that allow us to do this kind of precise alignment and characterization of the positioning of the lens on the sensor. Um, the, the, the ability to tie everything together means we develop a power supply board that can manage power to the cooler, to the electronics, to the lens all with a single power input. Um, the video processor takes the data from the sensor, often it's uncalibrated, and we can calibrate that data. We can format it into standard outputs. Um, we'll go into those in just a second. And then um, again, the uniformity across product line to give you a small compact 300 millimeter that gets down to a notional two degree a 690 to about a one and a half degree. And then the 900 gets down to below uh, a one degree horizontal field of view. And I think you're seeing a number of the, of, of zooms through our video right now playing on the, on the scene. So I'm gonna ask Adam to pop me over to this camera right now. And we'll get some close-ups. Of, of the camera so I can point out some of the features. Now again, this is a camera as a component. Um, we took uh, as a model a typical Sony block camera, for example, and we wanted to create kind of the infrared analog. So it's not a um, typical camera that a consumer would use. It's meant for engineering integrators and people who can design fixtures to enclose it and protect it from the environments and then make their own harnesses to the outside world. Um, you can see that we offer uh, engineering style connectors uh, for power, for ethernet. Um, our 
our sensors are all digital, meaning that we have HDMI output. There's a little HDMI connector. And then we can come up here and you can see these small connectors on top. Those are auxiliary connectors, uh, serial connectors for RS-422 or RS-232, and then inputs. Uh, our video processor allows certain serial inputs, such as a GPS or something else. Uh, for example, you can tag uh, video data with NEMA GPS data. So you can locate the camera in space anywhere and it'll be tagged to your video files. Um, also on here, you can see there's a memory card. We have uh, uh, 30, at least 32 gigabytes of storage on board. Um, and then all the heat sinking and uh, auxiliary power for fans to cool this assembly while it's in the enclosure are also provided by our systems. Um, one other thing I mentioned that this is HDMI. Um, HDMI, we also have a option for an SDI output. So uh, a two wire coax SDI output is adaptable from this HDMI output. That involves another board and a cable connector here, but we have harnesses, we have mounting positions for that other board. It's not displayed on this. Now, finally about the Ventus is that, you know, uh, you see two cameras here, uh, there's three cameras in the Ventus line. There's smaller cameras. I'll talk about another camera later on in this uh, presentation. Um, we have a range of uncooled cameras called uh, Vended, and they all kind of encapsulate the same uh, concept of integrated lens, integrated power, integrated sensor, and one body of uh, software control. So. If a customer adapts a cooled mid-wave camera, they can adapt our Vinden cameras to uh, uh, a uncooled application and have minimal integration work because once you learn one communication protocol, you master one of the hardware harnesses necessary to interface to our designs, uh, you, can, you have adaptability to the uncooled cameras as well as when we move into the super small cameras that we use for airborne. So that's something that we're working on at Sierra Olympic to have commonality across our product lines in, in some extent. And the Ventus Hot, these new Ventus Hot items are just another example of that adaptability. Um, Ventus Hot is nearing uh, LRIP. Uh, and we were taking it into qualification stages with our downstairs temperature chambers and everything. And we're ready to ship these out uh, for demonstration and evaluation. And so be sure to um, ask questions or contact your salespeople if you need to start considering an arrangement to get these into your hands. So that's all I wanna say about Ventus Hot. And uh, I'm going to allow our chief engineer, Stan Voynick, to come on, and he's going to talk about another exciting uh, 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 technology that we put together this year. So take it away, Stan. All right, thanks, sir. Okay, well, I'm Stan Voynick. I'm the chief engineer here at Sierra Olympic, and uh, you heard Chris talking about the camera as component, and these, these systems are designed for our technical customers or integrators who are engineers who are taking them and building them into, into other products. I'm actually going to come down into, uh, into the long wave sensors and into uh, an area that sort of bridges the gap a little bit between the really technical integrators and the more you don't exactly sell to consumers like people in their houses, but to uh, places where you might drop a, just a sensor in that's, that's sort of ready to go. This is the, the DRS Tamarisk, and Sierra Olympic is the master distributor in North America for the, for the DRS Tamarisk, and as a result of that, uh, you know, th th this is a, a, a mature, uh, capable, long wave uh, sensor. Uh, I think of these things as things that are more like the size of a, a loaf of bread or, or larger, and that's because they have coolers and uh, 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 
longer focal length lenses and zoom uh, capability and so on. Uh, the the Tamarisk is more in the size of a size of a marshmallow. This is a this is a 640, uh, 640 by 480 pixel sensor, long wave, so eight to twelve microns, and it's a uh, pretty much a fully integrated design. This is a fixed lens, so this is not a this particular example I have here is is not a, a zoom or a motorized lens, um, but this is a the the, the Tamarisk is a mature and uh, high performance, and it's a good value for uh, places where you can just drop in a, drop in a, a sensor like this. Um, when I say it's a mature design, we've been, we've been selling and, and distributing the Tamarisks for several years now. And I say, like I say, we, we run many of them through our, through our process here. And what a lot of our customers have recently been asking for are uh, more ways to integrate the, the Tamarisk into their systems. And so what we have done is we have added a feature to the Tamarisk, which is a, a, a USB connect connectivity capability. Um, Adam, I think I'm gonna probably convert over to the near camera here now and start to, so you can all see how shaky my hands are. Um, so this is the, uh, this is a 640 by 480 Tamarisk. And we have added onto the Tamarisk a, a board set on the back here to hold still so it can focus there we go and what this gives us is the tamarisk with our new board set has a usb3 uh, output capability now sometimes you uh, usb is supposed to be a great uh, a great protocol where you just take your your device and plug it in and uh, i know a lot of us have had experiences where we try to plug in a new usb device and then we have to run around and either download drivers or find the disk that might have come with the unit or the thumb drive and try to figure out the driver, uh, the driver situation. Uh, we've got this USB implementation. There we go, thank you. We've got this USB implementation uh, designed so that you can pretty much plug it in and uh, on a Windows machine, it wakes up and starts working. A good example of this is that in uh, when I was, I, I brought this uh, tam USB Tamarisk over to my computer, and I have a cheesy little thirty-dollar USB microscope on my on my office computer here, and it's got a very generic uh, video display uh, video display program, and I was able to bring up the video display program that came with my little microscope, pull down the video select uh, option, and it uh, immediately recognized the Tamarisk. And I was able to use that piece of software, which which didn't know anything about, uh, didn't know anything about the uh, the Tamarisk. Select it, and it came up right on the screen here. And you can see, uh, I've got it over here on uh, on one of my alternate monitors here. We were going to pipe this into the Zoom call, but with I'm sure we've all experienced how Zoom calls can be a little bit delicate sometimes, and we didn't want to be switching four or five different video sources. So I'm just looking at my looking at my monitor over on the side here. Um, so. I was able to walk up to the computer, plug this thing in, and and uh, just have it work essentially like a webcam. And I'm almost anything that that uh, that can recognize a webcam can talk to it. What you see here on my monitor that I've got displayed over here is just uh, the the ubiquitous VLC player. And we uh, opened up VLC on this machine, uh, just pulled down a drop down list, and again, Tamarisk UVC. Was was listed there. When I say UVC, what I mean is that's that stands for uh, USB Video Class. I think. Check me on this. <laughs> um, and by by designing this system to that standard, Windows machines just know what a UVC device is when you plug it in. Uh, like I say, I, I didn't have to pull out a, a, a disk to put a driver in. I didn't have to. Uh, find the thumb drive or download drivers from the uh, from the internet. I plugged it in, gave me a little message that it was configuring, and from that point on it was available in my video software. Um, this is the this is the, the, the Tamarisk you see displayed here is the Tamarisk Precision. This is a temperature calibrated unit. So you see, Adam, are we super still looking here? You see over on the side here a, a temperature bar and a readout. And so as I come across and get into, if I can do this as well, if I can coordinate myself here, you can see the temperature changing as I as I move through that that square in the middle of the image, and it's measuring uh, and displaying the temperature that, that it's reading in that region. Um, I'm going to pull back around here slowly so as not to make people air sick. Um, in the configuration I've shown here, 
get it to focus here. Let's see. Hold on. Focus in. Configuration I've shown here, it's a it's a just a very tight two-board stack that's smaller than the camera itself, as you can see. This is a UV, uh, excuse me, a USB-C connector. This is what you see on, on consumer devices. It's the little round connector. You can actually plug it in upside down, right side up, it doesn't matter. You plug it in either way and the system configures itself and, and, and works. Um, that's for pretty much a plug and play type application. And you can take this out of the box, plug it in and have it working. Uh, our, our stack here is actually like say, a set of two board configuration. And if I remove this connector board from that stack, what I have remaining is the single board configuration and this is an oh, what, what we call our OEM configuration. This goes back to what Chris was talking about earlier, which is when we have our, our, uh, our technical, keep my hand up here so it stays in focus. When we have our technical users who are wanting to integrate this at, at sort of closer to the metal kind of level, you know, get in and actually build their own circuitry and so on. You can discard the, the consumer connector and, and this little connector here, it's a, it's a Samtech style connector Right, it's, it's not the, the big, the, right next to the big chip, this little connector right in here. Mm -hmm. There we go, a little right at my fingertip. Uh, that's a high density Samtech connector. And you can uh, interface with our device right at that connector level. What's on that connector are all of the USB 3 signals, the super speed differential signals. I could go into all the technical details, but the bottom line is for the more technical users who want to, you could you could actually design your own board to go on the back of here in place of our connector board, and then start your integration right from that point, right close to where our output comes. Uh, we will provide you with the reference design if this if that helps you get moving faster. We'll provide you with a reference design of our connector board, uh, which has the holes in the right places, the connector mounted in the right place, the right connector specification for the for the uh, for the mating connector on the back and by pulling that reference design for our connector board into your system you can start with a known uh, design that plugs right onto our oem configuration of this device and get started with your own integration um, i think that's about it i've, I've uh, covered most of what i wanted to uh it's a it's a nice design i like it like, as i said it it bridges the the space a little bit between the, the Ventus line, which is uh, very much camera as component, uh, very much targeted towards you, you, you uh, more technical integrators. And uh, everybody from, I, I, I work with uh, researchers in universities and uh, you know people in small companies who are experimenting with ways to integrate infrared technology into their, into their devices. And uh, it really uh, crosses a wide range of our, of our user base. So that is the, uh, the camera's USB. I'm going to uh, throw it back to Chris now, and he's going to go back to uh, an even more technical side of our Ventus line and talk about the, the Ventus Micro. Thanks, right. Dan. You bet. I'm excited about this little product. It's cute to have. Oops. Yeah, sorry about that. <clears throat> I should have mentioned that Sierra Olympics done really well over this uh, period of coronavirus. Uh, we are operating in our in our factory. One good thing about our new building is we have lots of space, so people are um, nicely spaced out. Our team is diligent about their masks. Everybody in this room is at least 15 feet away from me, and we got lots of good ventilation. Most importantly, for a long while now, we've been testing everybody. We have in-house, uh, well, well, we bring in-house medical staff that tests everybody in the, uh, on, in the company on two-week centers. And we've been through several rounds of that and uh, you know, nobody's caught, nobody's tested positive. Our only positive test in the company has been one of our remote salespeople that work in their own home. So, you know, easy to quarantine. Um, that being said, let's move on with the technical stuff. Um, next product I want to talk about has been a long uh, journey for us. Uh, we've been involved with the sensor vendor for almost three years to develop a new sensor that represents the smallest mid-wave sensor that you can get on the market now. 
um, that's in production. Um, we've put it together um, and called the product uh, uh, Ventus Micro. Ventus Micro was originally conceived uh, for our Airborne uh, customers. Um, you know, Sierra Olympics heritage, especially in this uh, Hood River area, has been in airborne rem remotely piloted vehicles where every gram counts and all the performance that you can get out of every gram is what makes our business fly, to coin a pun there. Um, so of the 4,000 cameras, 4,000 mid-wave cameras that we've sold over the past 10 years or so, 90% um, of those have gone into airborne systems. And you know, we have constantly been improving the technology in, in performance per unit gram, performance per unit volume, and in, in, in many cases, performance per unit watt as well. And, uh, for our clients in the airborne business, especially in small remotely piloted aircraft, they know that performance per unit gram is everything in this business. We started this business where um, on an aircraft that uh, where, where every gram translated into 10 minutes of duration. So imagine that you save one gram about a paper clip and the drone can go for 10 more minutes. So, so it's not quite that nowadays, but we're, we're, we're always battling the performance per unit gram. Now, Ventus Micro, this, this, uh, this product right here is a combination of a new sensor and a new lens driven by the fact that we have a new sensor. The sensor is 640 by 512 by 10 microns. It's a nice step in the right direction to get a producible, a reliable and a, uh, a consistent product that is, is, is a smaller pixel. A smaller pixel uh, changes the F number of the system and therefore every optic has to be custom developed. So we've worked with the optics vendor, the sensor vendor over a period of years to perfect these two. And now all of these are coming together and both items are performing very well and uh, performing reliably. And when we talk about how these things perform, it's the same attention to detail that we put into these systems in terms of alignment, in terms of lens performance and the absence of backlash and the line of sight st uh, stability of the lens and how we can tie it together into a functioning system. It's not a lens and a sensor, it's a functioning camera as a component. It's based upon the same uh, video processor that um, we've been using and the same software. You heard me talk about the connectivity of the systems over here. Well, it's, it's, it's similar, it's not identical, but it's highly similar over here in Ventus Micro. So what was Ventus Micro motivated by? It was motivated by a customer who wanted to fit a mid-wave sensor with approximately a two degree horizontal field of view zooming in, a zooming two degree horizontal field of view into a six inch articulating volume. And so that's not as straightforward as, as one would think. Six inches, small, uh, lightweight uh, gimbals, um, with an articulating uh, mid-wave sensor, everything has to work well, everything has to be designed to fit within that small volume. If you can envision this in a six inch volume, that's where it's designed to be rotated around. That's what happens inside a gimbal. And you have to fit in other sensors. If you have your mid-wave here, some customers will wanna put a visible here, and maybe there's a laser range finder or maybe a spot tracker. There's a bunch of other things that go into a gimbal. And that's what our clients are designing this kind of sensor and this kind of lens around. Um, we've been, like I said, we've been involved with the sensor vendor, involved with the lens vendor, and we have um, already some, some volume orders in place. So we have a flow of these sensors coming in and we can support customers readily with this kind of technology. 
So let's get a little bit close up now, Adam, with the with the camera, um, so people can really get a good idea of what we're looking at. I'll try and get the glare off the system. And put my hand in there so the system focuses. So you can see that um, it's a unique lens design. Again, it's 16 to 180 millimeters on that 10 micron sensor. I think that's a 1.8 degree horizontal field of view at the narrow. Um, the sensor, you can see it's 100, let me turn this around. And people involved in cameras you can see that it's a 180 degree fold. The sensor is actually pointing this way and the optical path comes in through the front element, uh, all the secondary elements up, up the back and then into the sensor back here. So 180 degrees would usually extend out this far from the sensor, okay? And in order to keep it within the six inch volume, um, in order to keep it within the six inch volume, we worked with the lens vendor to do this 180 degree fold. Um, it's again, Aventus. So it is consistent with the same connector philosophy and the same uh, software philosophy. Move this around. So it's designed to be, get this up, uh, the up close camera. It's designed to be a, a, a camera that customers will interface to. So we have the Pico blade connectors for the ethernet, the video, the serial, um, the power. Well, the power is a Sherlock connector over here. Gosh, this focus is challenging. But anyway, the, the story is that it's meant for integrators. It's, it's got a uniform power supply that controls all functions of the lens, the sensor, the cooler, and the electronics. Um, the video processing is uniform across all Ventus, and we take a painstaking control to calibrate the lens to the sensor and calibrate the sensor through the lens zoom range so that you have perfect performance across the zoom. The product again is, is very small. It's uh, I think about 800 grams, 840 grams. And you know, we're dropping performance, if you measure it in field of view or something, that's a, at least a 200 gram performance improvement with this camera over previous generations with um, uh, uh, this design versus what we were doing three or four years ago. Um, like I said, this, this product has been a journey because everything's been new. The lens is new, the sensor is new, and we've been waiting for the, we've been working with both parties and on the sensor side and the lens side to, to, to finish up the uh, producibility of these. They're ready to go. We've had this design in one format or another for a couple years, but with um, the development hurdles, uh, it just has not been ready for uh, movement through our, our production system. So uh, right now it's an engineering product. It hasn't gone through our quality um, process yet, but we're ready to build more of these and offer them as engineering evaluation units to customers. And if there's an interest, we'll get this into our, our product quality uh, methods and finish up the design for Ventus Micro. So what we have talked about here is, um, you know, our Ventus products, the Ventus products designed for uh, long range, um, long cooler life, uh, high performance mid-wave imaging for integrators. We've talked about a new development where we took uh, our, our main uh, uncooled microbolometer product and put together a USB function and had some customers that requested it and now we're able to deliver that. And then 
finally finishing up with the um, with the uh, Ventus Micro, a small uh, camera that we've developed along the lines of our heritage of small, lightweight, uh, mid-wave cameras for uh, airborne. And I think that's where we're going to wrap up now. And uh, I think we have some time if people are still patient with us for some questions. And uh, is Stan going to come around here? Yeah. Okay. And how's this going to work? Adam's going to read some questions to us? Sure. Can you see them? Or no, screen? they're going to come up here. Yeah, and I've already got one queued up that I need to answer. How do so, we? I don't see uh, it. No, we're not actually, Adam. We don't have the chat window on here. So uh, if you go to the down below the chat, see the chat. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah, I'm on there, yeah. This is what 10 minutes of every Zoom meeting is spent. Go to there. No, 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 the other icon, you know. Uh, right. There, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I've already got one. I've already got one. Okay. To answer, so. All right. Okay, so we answered a 30 hertz question. The DRS cameras, because the 30 hertz camera. And do we provide an external sync? Well, the external sync is available. Um, there is a connector here, it's a Pico blade, it's a two, two, two wire connector, and the Tamers does support external sync, right. meaning Genlock. It's a rolling readout device, it's not a snapshot integration device. So you can synchronize two cameras together quite easily, and it works very well. We've yeah. done this dozens of times and exercised the uh, external sync on the Tamers, and it works extremely well. For example, one of one of one Tamaris can be set to provide a sync signal as its output as it's running on its 30 hertz frame rate. That sync signal can then be sent to other Tamarisks, which can accept the sync signal as an input and synchronize to it. Or you can provide an external signal to synchronize all the all the cameras with. Now I have a question already queued up if you don't mind. Okay, go over here for a second. So uh, and so often. When people say, "Oh, I'm glad you asked that question," it's it's actually said a little with a little bit of sarcasm. In this case, I am really glad that somebody asked this question because it was in my queue of things to discuss and I forgot it. The question was, "Can you get the raw 16-bit pixel data out of the Tamarisk with this USB attachment?" And the answer is yes. Now, I focused so much on the ease of connectivity and the ability to take uh, a, a webcam-type signal into uh, various pieces of software, but I forgot to go the next level down of, of the technology and say, yes, you can have the camera in its 16-bit uh, raw output mode and, and, and that uh, supply that data over to USB. Now, the, the caution there is that there are not many pieces of commercial, US, uh, commercial video software that recognize what to do with a 16-bit monochrome USB stream. Uh, you know, if you feed that into VLC, typically what it will try to do is it'll try to scale its output from, from uh, black to white over the full 16-bit range, and you'll get pretty much a gray image. Now, we, we do have uh, uh, some sample software here, and I was just talking with, uh, with one of my designers who actually came over and reminded me to talk about the 16-bit uh, feature. Uh, and what, what we do is we use uh, the uh, open library called OpenCV. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, a open source library, OpenCV for all kinds of uh, image processing functions. And within 10 or 20 lines of code, that's all you need to be able to go out and find the Tamarisk once it's been plugged in and recognized that by the USB system. Uh, set up some buffers and start streaming the data in. And in that environment, uh, yes, absolutely, you can get the, the raw 16-bit data off of the, uh, or in this case, I believe this, this uh, the Tamarisk is 14-bit 14, 14 data. But yes, you can get the raw pixel data before it has been uh, auto-gained and uh, had color palettes applied to it and uh, any of that kind of stuff. So yes, indeed, you can, you can get the full feature set out of the Tamarisk uh, what I was demonstrating to you here was the uh, sort of the colorized, scaled, automatically scaled, automatically gain controlled version. But you can indeed flip the Tamarisk into that 16-bit mode uh, and then yes, pull that same data out over the USB uh, connection. And I think the question specifically asked about the USB-C connector. 
Yeah, yeah. the USB-C connector and the and the OEM connector, if you remove that yes. connector board, uh, provide the, the, the same functionality in terms yes. of yes. the protocols and what can be transmitted across the USB. So there's no difference there. So thank you truly for asking that question because I was sitting over there watching Chris and, and cursing myself and, and, and why did I forget to bring up that, that feature? So thank you for the question. Okay, so we have a couple other questions that Adam's gonna have to ask. Okay, uh, have your, uh, Midwave device has been reviewed with respect to gas leak detection. So yes, we have a model of the Ventus right here that's uh, called Ventus OGI for optical gas imaging. I think we've had a tech talk about Ventus OGI previously. Um, the product's uh, an excellent product. It's performing in the field right now. And look at our website, look at our um, Look at our website, look at our, call our salespeople, we'll be happy to help you out. Um, it's a great product. Okay, next question, is the small camera, the Tamarisk, a global shutter? No, Tamarisk is not a global shutter. There's no such thing as a global shutter microbolometer camera. This camera, the Ventus Micro, is a global shutter. Tamarisk and all microbolometers, no, they're, they're rolling rolling readout uh, devices. Okay, next, is the micro radiometric? And do you have a vendor that has already integrated a range finder and visual camera? Um, the, the micro is not radiometric. It is just an imager. However, you know, Midway can, it would be hard to do radiometric imaging with a zoom lens. And that just was not the design intention of this, this camera. As far as integration with range finders, yeah, that happens all the time. A range finder is usually power and serial. So those are uh, integrations that are commonly accomplished. It's not what we provide though. You know, we are focused on infrared cameras. Does Sierra Olympic have plans to produce very low resolution midwave cameras? Example 64 by 64, this would be very useful for university research. So we are beholden to the um, sensor vendors out there. The sensor vendors out there are big military companies and big military companies follow the lead of their big military customers and 64 by 64 has not been around for 20 years. There are 64 by 64 sensors um, that are available from other parties and we would be happy to re refer them to you, but they are very special purpose for particular applications. Not on our roof. Okay, next, uh, for sales outside the US, I presume the cameras are subject to export control. Could you share how long that process would add on to the lead time of receiving a product? So Sierra Olympic is very, uh, uh, very attentive to the subject of export control. All of our products are developed with in-house funds and we do not accept uh, any government funding for the development of our products. The export rules in the US allow us to classify these items as dual use. Therefore, they are regulated for export control, but they are not ITAR. So that we have streamlined um, uh, ways to export all of these to international customers. And I'll be honest, a good portion of our business is international business. We just got a license approved for a mid-wave camera to ship to Brazil today. Um, and we can ship to many countries, 36 uh, countries uh, without a license using uh, license exemptions. And we do that commonly. Okay, last question in the queue. Uh, is there any SDK that comes with the cameras? If so, what programming language does it support? The, 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 all, all the control of these cameras is protocol based. So the, it's, it can be integrated into any programming language. 
meaning that um, the commands you send over are hex. And you have a rich 300 command list that can be embedded into um, any programming language you like. And so we have a wide range of customers that program under Windows programs, under Linux programs, lots of Python going on around here, and always by sending um, the hex commands that are well documented. All right, so I think that's that's the uh, that's the wrap up for this tech talk. I want to thank everybody for bearing with us for 47 minutes here. Went a little bit longer than we thought. I thought we'd be able to keep this to a half an hour. Don't want to impose on anybody's time, but we appreciate immensely the time that you spent with us. And always remember um, SierraOlympic.com. No dash in the middle, just SierraOlympic.com. You can always get to us there and. We have salespeople and engineers and staff ready to help. Again, thank you very much for attending.